mul on väga hea meel, et minu vestluskaasena täna Nirre Jaal, kes on kirjutanud sellise päris legendaalse raamatu Hukt, mis õpetab tegelikult ettevõtteid tehnoloogeid kasutama niimoodi, et tarbijad hakkaksid nende toodeti külge kinni. Aga nüüd on tavastanud paradoksaalsel kombel, et tarbija peab olema tark ja kuidagi ennast sellest välja murdma. It's a real pleasure to meet you. Likewise, thank you. Thanks for having me. Would you be very surprised if I will take out my phone and start it to, I don't know, all this ding and dongs and if something is, I don't know, on Instagram or Facebook or something, maybe message or something like that, would you be very surprised or not? I wouldn't be surprised, but it would be rude. Yes. Right? And so I think that's a good thing. I think we're learning now that those type of behaviors are not appropriate. And I think that's a good trend that we're learning. You are saying that uh, we have uh, very much distraction nowadays. Uh, all these ding dongs and everything around the digital world around us. Well, why not? What will happen when, uh, when, when everything stays the same and we will do nothing about it? Oh, what I, do you think? I love these technologies. I mean, I wrote a book about how to build habit forming technologies. So I'm, I'm very much a technologist. Uh, but we need to appreciate that with every great technological revolution, there are problems. Uh, you know, we, uh, Paul Varilla, the philosopher, said, when you invent the ship, you invent the shipwreck. So we need to expect that when there's a technological revolution of this scale, there will be problems. And so the idea is, you know, we, we don't get rid of our technologies. That's ridiculous. We need it for our livelihood. We need it for the advancement of society. And I love these technologies. What we do need to do is to figure out new ways to use them in a way that's not destructive. The, 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 the thing I like to tell people is that we want to get the best of technologies without letting it the, get the best of us. Because, uh, anyway, a lot of uh, books are saying that if uh, something distracts you, get rid of it. Right. And, it's and uh, don't use it anymore. Right. Just uh, go to the forest and, right. uh, and be calm and meditate and uh, yeah. have a detox or a digital detox. Right. What do you think about that? I tried it. I tried all of it. And it, it doesn't work. At least it didn't work for me. Uh, because this idea of just get rid of it is, is not realistic. These companies are not going anywhere. Uh, and many of us rely upon it for our livelihood, right? We need to use email and Slack and these accounts to do our work. And they connect us to our families. I mean, for most people, they benefit us. The idea is not to get rid of it. And that's why I wanted to write Indistractable, because I read all of these books that basically said the same thing, get rid of it. And not only did it not work, it's just not realistic. So that's why I wrote Indistractable. And Indistractable is a tech positive book. I love these technologies. I, I, I buy and try so many different things. And many of them have really benefited my life. The idea is that we need to use them with intent. That the, this idea, the central idea of distraction versus traction. Traction are actions that we do that we want to do, that move us forward in life, things we do with intent. Distraction is the opposite. Anything that we do that is not on that plan. So it's not just about technology. This is what I discovered in my research for Indistractable, that distraction has been around for a very, very long time. Socrates and Plato talked about it 2,500 years ago. And Facebook didn't invent it, right? People were distracted and still are distracted by you know, the football match and the television and the radio and the books. You can get distracted by anything. The idea is how do we learn to put all of these distractions in their place so that we do more of the things we want to do as opposed to using these services uh, because someone else, because the app maker or a commercial interest wants us to. I just think about uh, communication nowadays. I mean uh, communication betwe between people. Um, uh, who are uh, spending their times uh, uh, communicating via internet uh, apps or, or uh, so on so on uh, do you feel that uh, there is maybe um, less uh, this real communication it, it can or be. is it okay it really depends on the context I think you know when, when my daughter is able to connect with her grandparents that, who are thousands of miles away or she takes classes with people who you know, live all over the world, it's very, very positive. If she's using her device at the dinner table when we want to be present with somebody you know, inches away from us, then it's not so positive. So it's really about the context of how it's used. And it's never just about the technology. It's always about the harm done by that technology. And the idea is to adapt our behaviors to make sure that we get rid of the harm and keep the good. How to do it? Uh, what are the tricks there? Yeah. Uh, what can we do then? If, uh, if, if the, uh, for example, a uh, person is very, 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 very no, hooked, <laughs> and uh, how to get rid of this uh, yeah. hooking so, thing? So Indistractable has these four basic steps. 
Uh, I'll give you, th the three mm -hmm. are easy, one is hard. Okay. So I'll give you the three easy steps. The first thing we do is to make time for traction. Traction are the things that we want to do. And this starts by just planning our day. And I mean every minute of our day. You need to have a weekly template for how you want to spend every minute of the day. Now, you could put time on your schedule to check Facebook. That's fine. But check it when you want to, not when the apps want you to. So plan every minute of your day in your personal life, in your relationships, and your work life. And I talk about in the book how to do that. A lot of it involves other people as well. Then what we want to do is to hack back these external triggers. In my first book, Hooked, I talk about how these product makers are hacking our behavior. Well, now it's time for us to hack back. And the simplest thing you can do is to ask yourself, are these notifications, the pings, the dings, the rings, are they serving me or am I serving it? And so by understanding, by asking this fundamental question is, am I benefiting from these distractions, from these external triggers, the, the, all these notifications, or am I just serving the app maker? asking yourself that question and then changing your notification settings. Two thirds of people, it sounds like simple advice, two thirds of people with a smartphone never change their notification settings. And guess what? There is nothing Google or Facebook or any of these tech companies can do once you change those notification settings. It also goes for the workplace. Many people work in open office floor plans. Yeah. Terrible when it comes to it distraction. Is. We have to figure out these norms and these new practices, which I talk about in the book for how to do this, that tell our colleagues, hey, I can't be distracted right now. That's removing those external triggers. And then the, the last of these three steps is to, is to prevent distraction with pacts. And a good example of this is to use technology against itself. We can use these, many of these apps are free, there are thousands of them, that help us turn off the tech when we don't want to be distracted. So a good example is Forest, this app that I use almost every day when I have the urge to check Facebook or Google something. Instead, I use this app that blocks out anything on my phone during my focused work time. Okay. So those are the three easy steps. Make time for traction, hack back external triggers, and prevent distraction with packs. Those are the easy ste steps. Yeah, yeah. The hard step is mastering internal triggers. The icky, sticky, uncomfortable truth is that if you can't sit with your kids at dinner without looking at your phone, it's not your phone's fault. There's something you're trying to escape, and this is the core of every addiction, as opposed to a bad habit. An addiction has this uncomfortable emotion that we can't deal with without escaping into something. And this happens you know, with people trying to escape into a football game, into news, right? There's things called news junkies, people who consume news to escape real life. That's the fundamental truth that a lot of people don't want to don't want to face that all distraction starts from within. And so that's where we have to do a bit of introspection and either fix the problem, figure out what's going on in our life that we can't deal with without these tools to distract us or learn ways to cope with those uncomfortable emotions in a more healthy fashion. Are the product makers now angry? Uh, because you wrote that book and now you're saying that uh, and just manage your time and don't look at uh, all these things. Well, what do you think? No? I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't work for them. I've never made money from Facebook and those companies don't employ me. The companies that employ me are the kind of companies that build healthy habits, right? I work for yeah. companies that build exercise habits and uh, I've, I've you know, worked with the New York Times. I've worked with uh, companies that help expand banking services to unbanked Africans. I mean, these are the companies I work work with. They build healthy habits in people's lives. If people dump their bad habits, great. I think that's fantastic because the, the reason I'm doing this is that these principles are getting a bad name. People are thinking, well, because Facebook does it and now Facebook is tainted, well, maybe we shouldn't do that. And that's a huge missed opportunity. Businesses need to use more of these techniques because most products out there, they don't suck us in the way Facebook and Twitter do. Most products suck. Mm -hmm. Right? Government services, uh, not in Estonia, they're, I hear they're quite Thank good. Thank you. But yes, <laughs> mo in most of the world, government services, local businesses, enterprise software, it's horrible. It's hard to use. It's, it's not something that people want to engage with. It's something they have to engage with and they, they hate it. So what if we could use these same techniques to make these products more engaging? So we can get the, the good parts, you know, the best of technology, while avoiding the bad parts, not letting it get the best of us. We are very much worried about our children who are um, who are sitting beyond computers and uh, interacting there and uh, uh, maybe they don't want to go outside anymore to play. They have a lot of time to communicate uh, via internet. Uh, what do you think about that? Is it dangerous? 
Well, you know, no study, not one, has shown that there are negative correlations with, uh, with moderate amounts of, of screen time. So uh, two hours or less, zero negative effects. Where we start to see negative effects is where uh, kids are spending you know, three, four, five, six hours a day on, their, on this recreational screen time. That's where you start seeing negative effects. And I, I think that there's a few common sense rules that we can follow. Uh, one thing that drives me crazy is that parents let their kids use technologies that the tech makers themselves say don't use until a certain age. Mm. So Facebook and TikTok and all of these companies the age limit is 13. So why is your 10 year old using Instagram? The company says don't use until you're 13, listen to them. So that's one thing. Don't let your kids use technologies that are inappropriate. I'm not gonna let my kid walk into a blackjack casino and start gambling, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna let my 10 year old daughter order a gin and tonic at the bar, she's not ready for it. And so there's all kinds of things that kids aren't ready for. So that's, that's the first thing. The second thing we need to do is to understand what's really going on with our kids. Parents forever have been blaming the latest thing. Rock and roll music and the radio and the television, everything is melting kids' brains. Every generation has this. It's called a moral panic. And none of those things actually melted our brains, right? We came out okay. In my generation, it was television and couch potatoes. Yeah. And for the most part, we came okay. Maybe I'm not perfect, but you know, not terrible either. Mm -hmm. So we as parents need to dig deeper. We always blame what's called the proximal cause as opposed to getting to the root cause. And the root cause, for many kids that overuse technology is that they're not getting what's called psychological vitamins. They're not getting, you know, psychologists tell us according to self-determination theory that every human being on earth needs three things to, be, to have a sense of well-being. We need uh, mastery, we need autonomy, a sense of freedom, mm -hmm. and we need connectedness. And it turns out when we look at our kids today, many of them don't get those three things. I know in the United, I don't know in Estonia, but in, in the United States, when you think about the school system, Kids go through metal detectors to get into school. They're told where to go, what to do, what to think, who to be friends with, what to wear all day long. And when you put people in cages, they act like animals. There's only two places that we allow this to be done to people, school and prison. And so when that happens, we need to ask ourselves, wait, what are our kids missing? What are they escaping from that this becomes their go-to source? And so we need to dig deeper. It's not so simple. It's never just the technology. A good test for this, is to make playtime available. There is a crisis, at least in the United States, of, of a lack of play. Kids today don't play like they used to. And it's partially because the media has scared everybody that you know, there are strangers out there and don't let your kid roam around. Parents get arrested in the United States. There was a case recently of a parent getting arrested because their kid was a mile and a half at a park unaccompanied, on their own. Well, that used to be completely normal. Today, it's something that's worthy of arresting uh, a parent for. So, because parents are so scared to let their kids play in the outdoor, in the outside environment, and they've overscheduled them with, you know, swimming practice and Mandarin lessons and this and that, there's no time to just play, to be to a enjoy, kid. To so where kid. do they go? Well, of course, they go to their technologies because that's where they're going. It's called the needs displacement hypothesis. That if you're not getting what you need psychologically in, in real life, you go to the virtual world. You go find it somewhere else. And that, for many kids, is what's going on. Yeah. And frankly, if it wasn't this, you think if, if Fortnite shut down, you think kids would start reading Shakespeare? No, <laughs> they would find something else, just like we did. We got into trouble, right? That's what we did with our spare time. And so in many ways, I think we need to be thankful for these technologies because of all the good things. I mean, uh, truancy is down, drug use is down, teenage homicide is down, all of teenage pregnancy, record lows. Partially, that's because kids are staying indoors more mm -hmm. on their devices. So it's not, uh, you know, we need, to be, we need to be very conscious about a lot of the good things that these, uh, these technologies provide as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, in conclusion, what do you think uh, um, uh, the company should do uh, uh, in this era of destruction? Uh, what they should do uh, differently? Well, most companies aren't using behavioral design, right? Most mm -hmm. companies say, well, if we have a fancy technology, people just start using it. And that's not true. Okay. So, you know, for companies, uh, most companies don't have a problem with people overusing the product. Most companies are struggling to get people to use their product in the first place. And so for those companies, if they're building the kind of product that can help improve people's lives, 
but because of a lack of good product design, they're not using the product. Well, this is where behavioral design comes in. This is where the book Hooked is, is very helpful because it can help you help your customers do what they want to do. And so that's, that's the first thing they should do. Uh, you know, it, because again, very few companies have a problem with overuse. Most businesses yeah. out there have a problem with underuse. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you very thank much. You. Yeah, yeah, this is a pleasure. Thank pleasure you so either. much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>